Let me ask you a question, my beloved above average intelligence viewer. Do you think Andrew Yang is a man of the people? Hmm? I'll tell you a little story. I went to Marquette Senior High School, which is a public school in Michigan. It's a rather abysmal school. Any education I received was certainly outside the school walls and not within. But nonetheless, up until I moved to New York City, I my view of my high school and public school experience was that it was roughly averagely American. That that was the, the, the by and large American educational system. Now, perhaps if you were lucky and happened to be born to parents that were in a more wealthy neighborhood or more wealthy town, San Diego or Overland Park, you went to Blue Valley High School, which had a very modern looking stadium and brand new computers in their library, but it was still a public school. And then I moved to New York City and realized, no, no, there's an entire network of private, uber prestigious elementary, middle high schools that many of our leaders in American culture attend. And I had never heard of them. In fact, most of my friends had never heard of such schools. They're rarely discussed. They're on the same level of creating people of power that Harvard and Yale have carry none of the name recognition except for those who know to recognize the names. Now you may be wondering, okay, what are these, these schools? Well, they're a collection of schools in New England that very wealthy and prestigious parents send their children to. There is Exeter and Andover, perhaps the two most famous uh, academies, Exeter and Andover. There's St. George's, where Tucker Carlson attended, and that's in the part of the entire Independent School League, which is a set of Protestant wasp-like schools in the New England area that everybody from John F. Kennedy to the Bushes to Gore Vidal has attended. These are the ones that, that really launch many people into success. And that you would never know it you, in your day-to-day -day life as an American, most of the country, unless you move to the Mid-Atlantic and you start to work in media in New York City. And then you will bump up into these, this class, this upper class of, of Americans that attended such schools like Exeter and Andover. And you realize, for instance, like Andover has a $1.4 billion endowment. That is a high school, a private high school endowment that has a higher, more amount of money in the bank than many <laughs> developing countries do. That is a staggering figure. So let's circle back to Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang went to Exeter. He went to a very elite, very private, very prestigious school. But he's not the only one. Roxane Gay, the, the very notable feminist, fiery feminist writer, Roxane Gay. Where did she go? She went to Exeter. Indeed, Andrew Yang and Roxane Gay went to Exeter at the exact same time, the same graduating year. Nobody has ever asked the question to Andrew Yang, how was your time at Exeter? Did you know Roxane Gay? How come nobody's ever asked Roxane Gay, what do you think of Andrew Yang when he was at Exeter, that elite private school with you in high school? Nobody knows because many people don't know to ask. Many people don't realize that Exeter and Andover aren't some backwater high school in Ohio, but indeed very elite, very private high schools that cost $60,000 a year that parents send their kids to attend. To, to propel them into success. And the success rate at these schools is very high. You're getting into Ivy League schools after attending these, these, these primary schools. My point being in all this, once again, if I can circle back to being articulate, is that I made a video earlier talking about the literary standard way of speaking and that there is indeed an upper class of America that is perhaps the most sneaky upper class in all the world, and that is able to convince the majority of Americans that it does not exist the majority of the time, but it does exist, not only in the way that they speak, but in the schools that they attend. They attend St. George's, they attend Andover, they attend Groton, they attend Exeter, they attend this collection of 12 to 20 elite schools in New England, <laughs> and this is where they all go, and this is where they all meet each other, and this is where they build those powerful social relationships that they rely on later in life. Yes, we like to think that Harvard and Yale, the people that got there, got there because they worked hard. In our most optimistic days, we'd like to believe that people get into universities because they worked hard in school, they did a lot of extracurriculars, and that they deserve to be there on their merits. 
I find this a much harder argument to make when the child is 11 or 12. What merits do they have that distinguishes them above any other 11-year-old boy? Not that many. The only merits they have is they have very wealthy parents that have connections and know exactly the small elite schools to send their children to, namely Exeter or Groton or St. George's. And you will find if you trace back individuals, whether it be the Bushes or the Kennedys or Tucker Carlson or Roxane Gay or Andrew Yang, they all trace back to this small network of private New England schools. It's food for thought. Nobody really knows about this. Yes, people on the New England coast and the upper classes know about it, and they know to look for it on the resumes and in the histories of these individuals. Harvard and Yale certainly know to look for Exeter or Andover. But people that raised in the Midwest or even on the coast most likely have never heard of these schools. And I, I find it interesting to perhaps bring it to your attention, see what you guys think. Anyway, if you found this interesting or insightful, click like or subscribe. I will catch you guys tomorrow. I bring this up in particular because a lot of these graduates from these private primary schools seem to go into politics and in particular media. Doctors and lawyers are frequented all over the country. You can attend University of Michigan or University of Arizona and become a fine doctor or surgeon as there is a need for a distributed network of doctors or lawyers across the country. Everybody's in need of a doctor wherever you are. But media in particular, as in politics, is extremely centralized. And this, these centralized nodes like Washington DC or New York City attract all the talent, if we want to use that word, towards these cities. And so you bump into the, the top of the top, particularly in media. This is for whatever reason, often, I suppose, when you come from a family of wealth and there's not quite the, the need to generate income on the level that perhaps somebody studying in Tucson, Arizona is to be a orthodontist. But when you come from a, the upper classes, you get to extend ex Exeter and then you go into Yale, and then money is not a particular concern of yours, so you go into media. You go into power. Those with money generally are more interested in power. Those without money are very interested in money. Anyway, as I said, click like or subscribe if you found this fascinating. I want to hear more about the, 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 shadow, <laughs> the shadow class of the, the American culture. Thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.